Hey people. I'm not going to be calling everybody's name out tonight. Not tonight, my friends. Okay, Paz. There you go. I said one name. Uh, this is the this is the board that was in the other night for Wi-Fi, and we thought we'd fixed it with the SMC, but it misbehaved again. So, given that everything else has been checked, the only thing really left is the PCH. And rather than wasting another hour on that, I'm just simply going to replace the main board and transfer the serial number and just turn it into a donor part board. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's what happens. Uh, Keith Windsor remembers my name is Jack. Uh, Peter1466. Damn it calling people's names out. Damn it. Bad habit. Uh, sometimes you just have to accept that you, know, you might be, not be able to fix a board. And as tempting as it is to keep chasing that rabbit, sometimes it's better just accept the fate, realise you aren't able to fix everything. I mean, I know there are some people out there who can replace the CPU and things like that, but honestly, with things like the 1466, it's kind of, it's kind of a waste. You may as well just, you're likely going to have a bunch of 1466 spare boards around anyway, so you may as well just use them up. And of course, I really didn't want to have to ultrasonic this board again, but I'm going to have to ultrasonic the uh, new board anyway, because I'll have to take the uh, EFI chip off and reprogram it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. What I would rather be doing is some programming, but I can't just sit around programming all day. Ugh, great, ripping up the backlight there. There was a person I was supposed to get in touch with after I got the house loan because they had about fifteen hundred dollars worth of fourteen sixty six boards and things like that that they wanted to offload, and I need to get back in touch with them, but I've kind of forgotten who they were, and that was really bad of me. It's like I need a permanent whiteboard for this sort of thing. Or I should just simply learn how to use my calendar better. I mean, I do have Google Calendar, and Google Calendar is very good. But like with good backups, it's only as good as the person using them. Pretty much unless it's perfectly automated, the human factor is going to come along and ruin everything. And I am the human factor in this case. All right, shame. Yeah, this is a donor. It's a, ooh, what's that? Teeny tiny screw. To mark this as a donor somehow. Four four six. Bad Wi-Fi. Riston, that's not a good idea. Spilling coffee on your keyboard. Not a good idea at all, in fact. Okay. Actually, I shouldn't really write bad Wi-Fi on that. That should really be 
bad CPU, a bad PCH. Bad PCH. It always hurts the first couple of times that you have to destroy these boards because you think that it's perfectly good, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's like, no, nope, it's still something wrong. Okay, the camera's going to kick out. It'll be with us in a moment. Unfortunately, I can't work out what this was. I'm pretty sure this was uh, another 1.88 one, so I'll just get another 1.88. Let's see, 3437. Nick, I've actually never done one of those myself. So I, I really can't give it any advice in this case. Okay, so this is 1.88, so this will be a match. This is one I have obviously reworked before. That's not a problem, they just turn on, turn off pads, so that's okay. So we have to take the. Oh, the only trouble is this. I've already UV'd that one. I don't really want to have to put it through the ultrasonic and redo that. Maybe I've got another one I can use. 1.88, yeah, we might use this one instead. The problem is that when you put that UV stuff, cure stuff, back through the ultrasonic, sometimes it sort of gets liquid under it. Not always, but sometimes, and it lifts off, and you know, it's not very pretty when it does that. Okay, so we'll just simply take this chip off and adjust the serial number in it so that it matches the board that we, that we well, the original machine. Luke Davis, you know, I I find that even difficult. It's just, it's just something really difficult about doing that. You know, intentionally smashing something, even if it's non-functional. What is this? Is it a wind bond? Yep, wind bond. Oh, crazy logic, what did you fix up? What were the boards and what were the problems? Arnold G, how about you sit back and watch what's going to happen and then you'll go, oops, sorry, I suggested what you were already using. I know you can get dedicated holders for these chips, but on, honestly, it's just <coughs> it's just not worth it. Considering I can just quickly connect it up like that. All right, to be fair, a little bit more work's going to be needed there. Yep, it's chunky, but it works.
honestly, the biggest drama is legitimately going to be seeing if we can get this programmer to not cause the rest of the system to have a heart attack. Yeah, the stream is going to die. It might die. I can't guarantee it, but it might. Okay, here we go. Oh, plug it in, buddy. Plug it in. Come on. Come on. Yeah, it's it. Squeeze it. There we go. Ooh. No, didn't completely die. Hello Greg M. I'll say your name because I know you well enough. Have to try and quell a smouldering fire with a client and a job took me a couple of months to do. It's a train wreck next year. Oh right, the actual right. The client job relationship is the um, smouldering fire. as opposed to literally on fire. Turn off extractor. No. Uh, sometimes the extractor I like to leave on because it scrubs the air. So who's got the next big crypto pick? I've noticed my LTC has been going through the roof today. Let's see, what is it? We're, we're peaked out at 144.95 and we're currently sitting on 143. So I'm about 20% above my original commitment. That makes me happy. Ah, good, right. That's good. Uh, I really am looking forward to when I can get the better desk set up so I don't have to do this reach over business because it's quite frustrating trying to program type with the reach over style. Serial. Oh, the serial number's right here. My glasses. Oh, there they are. That is a weird serial number that one had. 
C1, okay, J7. Sorry, MWK. Well, no, someone's put this in wrong. That serial number is wrong. You can tell by the way it ends. Okay, I know what they've done wrong. That's all I had to do. That... Yeah, it's valid, so we've done the checksum as well, so that's good. Crypt. I hate that about this. For some reason, the tab completion with regards to the Mini Pro program in Linux by default has a botched up um, autocomplete. I don't know why. Never really quite got around to finding out where the fault is in that. Pionov in here, or is someone just talking about Pionov? I know there he is. I did find with the UEFI tool you had to get the new drive edition, otherwise, you will not get the uh, humanized breakdown names. Hey, Catherine. Man, it's actually quite warm in here for some reason. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just getting excited about... Ooh, LTC now up to 144, just over 144. I'm not sure what's driving the LTC increase right now. It's like... Yeah, it's sort of like, from earlier this evening, it's just... Yeah, I mean, constantly, someone's pushing it. Yeah, I'm not sure when the... Someone's going to cash out soon, and it's just going to go... Drop down. I mean, look at the size of that buy. What was that? 35,000. It's crazy.
Early Milner, that's lovely. Thank you, Margarita Doctor. Uh, Pernov, it's probably just... I don't know why. Honestly, I do it infrequently enough that I just don't care. It'll be finished any second. Take your profits and short sell some Robin Hood. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a fiasco. Interesting process that's been. Um, I probably could get away with not reading it, but I'll let it read it. So. Like I so said, if you only do this once a week, it's not a problem. It could be the port that it's working from, I don't know. I mean, mind you. Even, uh, what was I gonna say, even the slowest of USB would write faster than this, because this is only eight megabytes that it's writing, uh, eight megabits that it's writing. So it should not take this long. One forty two. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping it will get up to like one ninety, but I can't see that happening in a hurry. But it would be nice to see LTC get up to one ninety, but it's just not going. Yeah, I don't know. All right, everything's done. And best of all, we didn't kill the machine. I think. Not killing the machine is a perfectly good outcome considering we you know, did this on live stream. Alright, uh, take it off. Uh, I'll do it this way. So like we could say, well, let's do it faster, but then the stream will crash. Put some leather down there. Shoot, it's way too much leather. Yeah, we're just gonna have to squeeze that out the sides, unfortunately. Can't really get it off with that soldering tip. hasn't yet fully melted underneath yet. You'll know when it is, because all of a sudden there it goes. Oops, my resistor just came off. So did that one. Looks like I'm the crazy man tonight. By the way, if people are not yet subscribed to Jason Vilmer of SDS Telecom, and if you like watching iPhones and things like that, he's just about to hit 100,000 subs. So I'm gonna recommend, if you haven't already, it's worth going and joining him. He's got some 
very different sort of content. He himself is quite an interesting, quirky chap, in a good way. And it'd be nice to see him hit 100,000. I mean, he's going to get there anyway, so maybe I shouldn't bother promoting him. But yeah, SDS Telecom. I'm sure someone here knows him. Jason Vulner. Uh, Luke, I'm using 100, 110 uh, 460 temperature. But as always, it's really just up to you. The real measure is, does it melt quick enough without burning the parts uh, and things like that. It's all certainly far more of a qualitative than a quantitative process. Hey Andre. Lewis Rossman used to promote me a fair bit, but now he just curses me out. I think I have to put some more bugs in his software. Remind him of why he needs to be nice. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a um, annoying thing. Actually, I don't need to. There's enough paste on there for me to get away with what I want to do. I want to put it back into the chassis, make sure it boots properly and things like that before I take it to the ultrasonic cleaner. No such... Oh, well, yeah, no, I agree there's no such thing as bad policy in most cases. I mean, I'm sure there are some bad publicity situations. But for most cases, yes, I concur with that statement. Need some more fresh paper towel. So we try to double up on those little PC board edge rubber things. There's already one on that board. I didn't need to make it two. It wouldn't have fit anywhere. Give it there you go. This is Peter Lewis complaining is what got me to your channel. That sadly is a very common, <laughs> common method for people ending up on my channel. Lewis making loud and repeated complaints about me. Even though he has no real valid standing for those complaints. It treats me like a punching bag, but really... Uh, he owes me so much. Strictly speaking, that's not true. Strictly speaking, the scenario I have with Lewis is um, a marketing dream, really. You just, you can't buy that sort of um, authentic promotion. If you try to buy things, it just ends up sounding like those people who promote NordVPN at the start of their videos, and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like, okay, I mean, you know that they're doing it for the advertising, that's fine. 
but um, yeah, the, the authenticity just isn't there, especially with things like NordVPN after their fiasco. Mind you, I'm sure they've fixed that up by now. Okay, going to do close as possible to a full build. I'm just not putting the drive in, that's all. Just in case something bad happens. See if there's even boots. It might be flat, I'm not sure. Okay, I was about to say, where's my chipmunk? And I'll find out for sure. Okay, keyboard works, screen works, speaker works. We can now put the charger in. Cranky. Uh. How's that LTC one forty two? Yeah, it's starting to tank. W. Okay, Wi Fi is good. Temperatures are looking good. About this Mac. Let's make sure our serial numbers match. Let's see what MK, MWK. Serial numbers are a match. Is there any indication anywhere in the MacOS system where it would say if the CRC is wrong? But I mean, we've already checked with the UEFI tool, but I just thought I'd double check just in case someone knows of a secret system. Okay. Kind of curious, it's a little dim on this side of the screen. At least it feels like it's a little dim. Okay, FaceTime works. Thank you for that terrifying. Uh, LTC is Litecoin, as in a Bitcoin type thing, cryptocurrency. That is definitely darker down that half. Oh, yeah, I can see I've got a stage light effect here. Okay, so what we've got here, the board has a problem with some of the feedback lines probably I think okay so we definitely have a fault I don't think it's a bad LCD no. I'll check the connector and I'll check the cable but I'd say it's probably a bad return line on the backlight driver or one of them because there's I think it's like five or six of them just disconnect that Let's have a look. If we're really lucky, we'll be able to actually fix it in situ. Yeah, that looks like one of them is probably gone. Bye bye. Anyone want to guess which one? Okay, 
The black one, that's well said, good sir, well good said. Well, that's a problem, they're all actually reading as connected. Okay, the other problem could be is maybe one of the pins here didn't get soldered properly. I know I'm also checking the backlight pins, that's just more of a precaution. None of those are moving. Okay. Could also be the balls on the driver chip. I'm hoping not, but it could be. Those pins look okay to me. Okay, let's check the resistance on them. I know we we're checking continuity, but we'll actually check resistance. Three six five. I'm not drawing any winners here yet. Okay, yeah, they're all actually pretty much the same. Crikey. Mark, cap top left one dark. Yeah, that's not going to be a problem because the stage light effect that we're seeing is actually it's on individual. Um, it's on one of the returns or two of the returns. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just bring up the board view and schematic. Okay, so. These are all the returns. Let's so bring it up. Now, according to these, these should all be zero ohms. So that would mean my multimeter's got some pretty dirty tips at the moment. And so, what it could be is on the actual backlight chip itself. It could be one of these balls is not quite sitting right. One of the traces is not right, so it's going to be fun. Interesting, they actually say out. I would have thought that would be an in. But yeah, so it could be, see, let's see F set, I sense, I sense one. So it could be anywhere around here. What I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to plug it back in. Yeah, maybe it was just dirty contacts. 
it's wishful thinking too. Wishful thinking is an acceptable repair technique. <laughs> Well, because if some, at some point I map out the um, return lines relative to the stage, you know, the actual position of the LEDs down the bottom and top. And so when you see the stage lighting effect, if it's in only a certain portion, you can go, oh, you know, that's lines three and four or whatever. No, that's, yeah, it's still definitely dark. And it's only like in this one segment okay what we can do is while it's running like that we can check the voltage on those resistors and see whether we can see any differences ah come on multimeter you can make it come on just a little further back that's it well, that was disorientating for a second. Now, if we're really lucky, we will have zero volts on one of them. Really lucky. Okay, so we've got 16, 16, 16. Aha, there we go. Okay, so this one here is not getting through. 16 and that one's not getting through or is it? it's just me not forcibly forcing my way onto it yeah that's a problem so nothing there nothing there what the hell's going on there? Does the voltage change to four volts lower? Ah, oh, it's probably just brightness adjust, that's why. Yeah, zero. Alright, so for whatever reason this one and this one, those two there, are not coming through. I'll re-solder them, those two, mind you, to be honest, get, we'll disconnect the battery. Now this one here I could almost believe, it's, you know, very, it looks kind of maybe not quite making contact, but this one, it's definitely solid contact there. So, yeah, I don't really feel like it is the pins, that's a cause for concern. So I'm I'm gonna say it's actually the backlight driver chip. Cause I really when I look at these I don't believe that they're at fault.
No, the um, the screen works fine in another board. The screen was working fine on another board, so the original board, the board that has the Wi-Fi fault. Hey, ITC. Put a truly bad connection on there and there. Okay, yeah, I know, I know, the god awful Hershey Kiss connections there. It's because I don't have enough heat in that tip. I'll just pull the connector out. People don't need to tell me how bad my soldering iron technique is, I already know. I'm just making it worse. The reason why I'm not using any hot air assist here is because I'll do it once I get the uh, board out. <sighs> is because it is in the chassis. And if you just go blowing hot air all around in the chassis, you're going to melt something. Something that you're not watching. And it will turn from being a simple job into a nightmare. I'm just pulling back the insulation of the conformal coat there a little bit just to double check Ah, no wonder Alright, that's looking pretty good for me. Let's have a double check of that, those pins. Oh, hello, is that solder paste? I don't think it is. I think it's actually, uh, what do you call it? thermal paste Yep, still the issue. Okay, I'm gonna go that it's the backlight driver. Yeah, we can actually confirm this. I'm gonna plug in another screen. Uh, once I can find where my other. Where is my magical screen cable here? Should have just done this from the start. Come on, screen, come on. Where are you? Okay, now you're a 1398, 1502. Let's see, what are you? What are you? What are you? 
So this effectively will definitively indicate whether we got a mainboard fault or not. Well, close to definitively. Ah oh man, glasses. Yeah, I won't bother with that. So I'm sure I damage their screen. Stick some rando object under there. Let's not talk about making little MacBooks. Let's turn off this overhead. I'm going to be annoyed if this does end up in a screen fold. I could have sworn I did. I'll actually have to go back over the old videos with the Wi-Fi one and see whether I did use the client's assembly and whether it showed the problem because we were more focused on the Wi-Fi than we were on the screen. Yeah. Well I sincerely hope it's going to be the driver, I'll be most upset if it's not. Because the driver I can fix the screen, that's going to be a pain. Okay, I'm a little concerned because it's um Okay, it's it's the driver. So you can see down here the stage lighting effect. You can see those little black dimples down the bottom. Okay, so yeah, it's the driver. People are going to say, "See, we told you, you should have just done that right from the start." And it's like, no, that's not how you do tech work. That's not how you do proper diagnostics. You you go along, you do eliminations to provably show what the fault is and then once you've provably shown it that's when you replace the parts when it comes to things like this because otherwise you're just shooting from the hip and sometimes when you shoot from the hip you hit innocent bystanders and that's fine if you're going to own up to it but a lot of people sort of go oops and just like ch -ch -ch, yeah throw some dirt over that, hope no one notices. I'm sorry, but I'm sick of seeing that crap in this industry. In fact, pretty much every industry. It's just the nature. It comes down to your personal ethics. And I'd rather take a, an extra few minutes of my time to provably show that it is a particular fault than just shoot from the hip all the time. All right, so we've got to just redo the driver. It may be a case of simply that the balls did not um, reflow properly. Yeah, it could be something simple like that. It would just replace it outright. Uh, am I going to miss out being on 10 minute tech? Man, I was hoping to get my certification this week. Oh well. The local shop kiosk wouldn't accept me without my 10 minute tech cert. Come on, there you go. Oh, Greg, you've been struck by that uh, Office 365 emailing issue and stuff. I've seen a lot of people complaining about various issues that are cropping up. It's the only downside, I suppose, with... Well, it's not the only downside. One of the downsides 
of using the online software suites is that when you do get issues it does tend to afflict everybody okay I've got a screw in here there we go LibreOffice yes I actually do use LibreOffice myself for writing manuscripts books and uh, such I though I use LaTeX or Likes yeah, I often cheat I just go for using Likes rather than LaTeX directly Likes is kind of like a um, it's a cheats way of doing nice LaTeX work what, uh, if people don't know what LaTeX is that's okay don't hurt yourselves don't bother finding out but if you've gone through university and you've done a dissertation and things like that, you will know LaTeX well enough. Okay, so, backlight driver. I can only imagine the driver got internally damaged because I do know that this connector has been replaced that's I recognize my own soldering so I'm going to guess that the the driver itself is electronically damaged and in order because I'm lazy and in order to avoid the ugly well some people consider it ugly steppiness of the retail sourced drivers I am going to actually take a driver from another board and reball it now you can change the programming of these afterwards but for me it's just easy enough to reball a driver I mean it only takes an extra minute Okay, so you go straight into the rubbish bin. No harm in having a little bit of practice on rebuild. They, they're kind of like doing um, TriStar chips on the iPhone. This is basically the MacBook TriStar equivalent in many ways. Oh, crikey. I keep forgetting to order more of my desoldering wick, and I am literally down to the last three inches of it. And that's not going to bode well when I need it. Damn it. I mean, I do have other wick. But you tend to get used to the behaviors of a particular type and brand. So when you change back, it's like, what am I doing with my life? Rico, no, I use um, 6337 Kester, uh, 15 thou thick. For the reballing, I also just use 6337. Alright, so our pads are nice and cleaned up there. They'll stop the reballed replacement from squirreling around too much. And now to find a viable replacement. There is something running around in my hair and it feels terrible. Honestly, it feels like Starship Troopers and something's about to poke me through the brain and drain out my brain fluids. I'm just trying to find a board that doesn't have a completely destroyed looking
driver. Yeah, it's a bit dodgy. Oh, that looks sweet. We'll use that one. Hey Voldemort, uh, we're just doing a board replacement for that wife. Ah, oh, shoot. Damn it, Walter, you made me, made me accidentally create phosphorine gas and kill myself. This is the Wi-Fi machine. We're just replacing the board. And I am doing a terrible job of holding this chip. And it turns out that the replacement one that we had has a backlight driver issue. So we're just replacing the chip and we're reballing it so that we get an original type chip that has the smooth transition programming already done. You smashed it with that. <laughs> what happened? Why did it go wrong? I suppose the natural tendency for me to say is, what did you do wrong? You're talking about the... I think it's probably... For me, it probably comes down to the fact that I've got that holder. That helps so much. Yep, every damn time it's always the gaming. As soon as you see gaming on the person's name, you pretty much know they're going to be a spammer. I still don't know what I've done with my spudger. Lost somewhere among all this crap. Oh well. Oops. We'll just use the terrible old plastic scraper blade. It'll do the trick. And yeah, I know there's junk in there. It'll, it'll come through it on that. It'll be okay. Oh, this is terrible. It's not even properly covering it. I'll do. I've got it around here somewhere. I just need to clean my workbench up. So don't send me a million spudges because I've got them. I've just got to find them. And people sending me spudges and things like that only encourages me to become a sloppier person.
No, Walter, it's just that if I do it this way, I don't have to... Damn it, Walter, you can distract me. I don't have to um, readjust the programming on it. Because if you use the ones from the shop, uh, like Element 14, DigiKey, and things like that, they have a stepped program in terms of the transitions. Whereas the ones that are on the MacBooks, they have a smooth transition. Are you kidding me? I accidentally picked up that chip. This chip's having a hard life and it hasn't even started. Um, the, the mat that it's on is just simply a silicon baking mat, nothing fancy. Get it from your local cooking store or kitchen store, something like that. It's actually not the best thing because these fibers that go through it, they when it comes to chips this size or the smaller ones, then they won't sit flat. They sort of... Um, the fibers cause a bit of a corrugation effect so it makes it a little more difficult to get these things to sit around properly uh, we'll see what we're going with the balls once it's done okay I'm not calling runs until the Don't forget, there can also be defects in the visual appearances of them due to the camera and lighting. No, no, I'm not seeing any real, not real runs anyway. Yeah, there's nothing, when you look at it like this, there's nothing that explicitly jumps out and says you know you're just not going to work if anything the bigger problem is that there is a that second from the bottom row is a little bit stronger than the rest actually yeah, I might just do it again anyway there, there are a couple of uneven ones there that's actually what I was talking about in the way this mat doesn't actually do a great job I don't think I'll get it any better, but we'll try again. I just really need to find that spudger so I can do the application better.
Come on, Paul, put some effort into it. Find that spudger. Or find something that you can use in its place. I'll be around here somewhere. I've got a chip lifter blade. It's perhaps a little bit thin for applying paste because you can't really put the pressure down. But given that we've got a fairly shallow stencil, we might be able to get away with it. So here we go. Not my recommendation, by the way. Not my recommendation. Yeah, see how I can barely apply any sort of... Yeah, I can't see this turning out well. We will use rather slow air on this one. The reason why I want to use slow air is I'm trying to get the stencil to heat up evenly and not do that uh, pop buckle behaviour that sometimes they can do. Yeah, if you get a bit of a even heating. Okay, about ready now I reckon. Go in for the kill. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's just surrounded by lead paste. It's okay. I'll just give it a little pushy wushy. There we go. All good. What the hell? Flying ants turning up again? Hey Warren. Uh, looks pretty good. Give them a chance to recenter themselves. touched um, the molten balls were touching the tweezers and it kind of pulled off one of the balls when it was still in a semi-liquid state more of a um, paste kind of yeah. no it was partially liquid just extremely viscous all right that's good let's stick this damn thing on the board and get out out of the way
tweezers. Right, guess who doesn't know where pin 1 is? I can guess, but I'm not going to. Constructing the pin one marker. Talk about um, a hell of a lot of work for, you know, in this particular case, yeah, it would have been quicker now to reprogram that damn chip. But under normal circumstances, when I'm not doing YouTube, and when things actually go as planned it doesn't take that long anyway there's our pin one up there all these damn threads everywhere and that's way too much flux another thread Now I'm not sure that they actually have all sat down yet. A little bit close now. Good. Yep. They jumped into position very quickly, but it was too quick. It pretended that it had sat down, but it really wasn't. It was a lie. Now, hopefully after all that, we haven't ended up damaging this controller. That would be unfortunate. Easiest thing here for me to do is simply to use that test screen that I have. And that way I don't risk the client's machine. I only risk my own. we need the boot now obviously this is I'm not going to have any keyboard or mouse control on this so we're just going to, have to hope it boots into something sufficiently useful that we can see whether those uh, backlight returns are good or not
Probably wouldn't have hurt for me to plug in a wireless mouse and keyboard. Oh well. Too late. In fact, I should just throw in the whole damn thing into the chassis. <laughs> it's too late to fix it now. Hey, Oliver. Okay, so the area we're going to be of interest in is down here. At least we know the backlight driver does work. I'd be curious to see whether it's the driver or whether maybe the traces blew through. The traces are blown. That no, it doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, I will stop waffling because the more I waffle, the more uh, I tend to detract from my appearance that I know what I'm doing. What do they say? Um, keep your mouth shut rather than open it and leave no doubt. Remove all doubt. Okay, that's good. You can see there's no stage lighting effect there. So we have fixed that. That is now a fixed board. Good. And we can't shut that down. Actually, we can. All right. Uh, Louis and Dante, it is normal for it to take this long because we are booting from an device that it's not its normal primary boot and we didn't have a keyboard so that we could activate the option key to say boot from an alternate source so what it was doing is it was just going through all its options bit by bit and then eventually it got to the USB boot option right. uh, screen extension cable came from AliExpress you can get them for the 1466's and you can get them for the 1398, 1502s. Right, Someone asked a question about a MacBook. I have an issue on my Mac. Could you provide some advice? Well, we have to know what the issue is first. So, uh, my general policy is just ask, don't ask to ask. And if you get ignored, then it's the way it goes sometimes. You, oh, well, you made your own. Okay, yeah, that would be brutal to do. Yeah, they're, they're nice screen cables, and yeah, you do... It may be possible to use the 1502-1398, or the Retinas Type 1, on the 1466, but I just personally have two separate ones. They are very slightly different, so... Um, yeah, you, you can always test and find out. LTE support in any laptop? Uh, I have no idea. I guess you just get a USB adapter that has the SIM card holder and such. Right, so this has to now go back into the ultrasonic. That will happen tomorrow. But at least the machine is done. It's working. Yeah, we couldn't fix the Wi-Fi. Which is a shame because everything else on that machine seemed to be okay. But I guess it might have only just been a matter of time before the PCH completely decide to capitulate and take out everything. Do you think the 2011-15 is worth... Uh, I... yeah... I personally wouldn't if I was my... you know, it was my machine. But in saying that, I mean, I have a 1398 and 1502 and 1466s, so I'm sort of... Uh, I don't know. I feel like the 2011s are sort of... 2011, 12 and 12s are maybe getting a little bit long in the tooth. I mean, they are nice in the sense that they let you have your own hard drive, your normal solid state drive, two and a half incher. You've got that sort of aspect. And if you get the i7 version or a high speed i... Um, 
i5 maybe but personally yeah I kind of would prefer you know 2013 onwards sadly I'm finding the 820 boards are starting to show up and with dead PCHs more and more now so yeah I don't know I think I was for a while there the 820 board was a good sort of machine but it seems like it's too also coming to the end of its working life What's this? Oh, they're doing SN9 today? Did they get the um, FAA approval or are they just saying stuff you FAA? Now, I don't know what the FAA is doing. I'm wondering whether maybe one of the other space agencies decided to meddle with things. You know, try and delay um, Elon from doing that launch because you know, as far as I could tell, they normally they do pretty much everything by the book so I can't see why they'd be changing things now. So I don't know, maybe it's a bit like with the Robin Hood situation where what you get told in the media isn't the full story. Yeah. They did get the FAA approval? Oh good. That'll be good. Fourteen sixty day Big Sur Death. What is the definition of the Big Sur Death that you're seeing, Walter? Retired tech, uh, when were you doing your repairs? I used to always read a magazine, or a couple of magazines called uh, Electronics Australia and Electronics Today International. And they would always have, well, Electronics Australia had um, the, I think it was the TV tech or the tech guy, something like that. And it was always the stories about their repair process. And that was perhaps my most... Um, enjoyed column that I would read. I wouldn't really call it a column, it was a couple of pages. Just reading the process that these chaps would have to go through to try and repair TVs or radios or VCRs and things like that. And uh, I'd say I probably read pretty much every single one of those that were printed, at least certainly up until the 90s. So what happens? Uh, bricked effectively. Oh. That's curious. On a 1466, they're bricking them. So you're thinking like an EFI failure, or can you like rewind it by putting an earlier EFI back on? I mean, we're getting. I'm getting 1466s with Big Sur on them. Nothing dying yet, but I'll watch out for that. Let's see, James, my Mac need to reboot. And since then, it won't boot up again. Get the Apple logo, loads, trying to in safe mode, recovery, and try. Um, I would say hard drive, yeah. Is it an iMac? Not that it really matters, but it sounds like hard drive to me. So take that out, recover the data from another Mac, or maybe connect it up to another Mac and put it into target disk mode. Sometimes you can get away with it just in target disk mode. Air, Air the Boss, after missing the Blaster Technology premiere, <laughs> what was the Blaster Technology thing? I guess maybe that's something you're going to tell us. 2011 MacBook Pro hard drive, definitely. If it's still got the spinning hard drive, then yeah, definitely hard drive. Get almost every single one that comes in here has got a failing hard drive, one way or another. Bob Siddle grew up as a TV repairman back when there were still tubes. Tubes give me nightmares. Tubes. Something about tubes. Something about that nostalgic glow and hum. I don't know. It wigs me out, man. It wigs me out. I feel like when I'm looking at tubes, I feel like I'm looking at someone's soul that's being captured in glass and tortured. Yeah. I don't know. I know it's not real, but um, yeah, something about the noise that they make particularly on the radio ones, it unnerves me dramatically. So yeah, if you ever if you ever want to spook me out on a Halloween or something, just leave it send me a tube radio and uh, what we could do is maybe one night have a tube radio in a darkened room and me and see if I can survive the night. So uh, <laughs> I probably won't. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I'm out of here. It's um, 1:30 in the morning. Time to go get some food. Watch some TV. 
get ready to not sleep until 5.30 in the morning and I will um, yeah, maybe catch you guys tomorrow. I do have more machines to get done but this one took a little longer than planned. At least the serial number transfer went smoothly. Uh, thanks to Pilnoff for actually doing a video on how to do that. And if you are on Linux and you get that UEFI tool, make sure you get the branch that has the new uh, human naming expansions or of the various sections. All right, I'm out of here. You'll take care. I'll see you next time. Might be tomorrow. Until then, catch us later.